People ask, have you been born again? And you're supposed to answer, oh yeah, I'm born again. Let's decide to let God teach us directly. So, are Christians born again? Let's find out. Oh, good morning. So have we been tricked? You have to wonder, have we been tricked? The very interesting thing that happens to people by, the, by word, just by word. All through our Christian lives, We've been told about getting born again. People ask, have you been born again? And you're supposed to answer, oh yeah, I'm born again. Well today, let's look into the biblical requirements of becoming born again. We wouldn't want to be tricked by tricky words from tricky people, would we? We have enough of that already. So, let's decide to let God teach us directly. Let's be wise and check up on what we've been told about the Christian truths by people. People, oh different from the scriptures. Our source of truth is that big book called the Holy Scriptures. Isn't that really one of focus? Your copy, by the way, may contain mistranslated words here and there. Yes, we will recognize this as we study. Because you have to study the whole word of God to catch up the trickiness. Because translators are people too. Isaiah 29. You can turn there. The general population is not up to speed in mentality. Let's say it that way. Here is God's word to modern day people. They're living right here in the USA among us. Isaiah 29 verse 9. Praise and wonder. Blind yourselves and be blind. Go ahead. They are drunk but not with wine. They stagger, but not with intoxicating drink. For the Lord has poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes, namely the prophets, and he has covered your heads, the seers. Who's predicting the future? The whole vision of God, the whole vision of God, that's what was given to us, has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one, some person who is literate, saying, read this, please. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. Oh, verse 12, then the book is delivered to one who is illiterate, saying, read this, please. And he says, I am not literate. 
Therefore, the Lord said, inasmuch as this people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts from from me very far, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandments of men. Therefore, behold, I will again do a marvelous work among this people. A marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden. It's kind of a criticism, isn't it? God is criticizing through his prophet Isaiah, his people, his very own people. That's who we are. We are God's people. Even today, people having some interest in the word of God, there's a few left, are being taught by the commandments of men. Men who make up things. Men who establish their traditions and stick to it. Traditional Christianity teaches people many things that are wrong. They teach Sunday as God's Sabbath, sprinkling instead of immersion, Easter instead of Passover, giving or going to heaven instead of a resurrection on earth. The resurrection is especially distasteful to the Christian community. That's a short list for now. They also teach that Christians are born again. That's another thing they teach. Is that right? Or is it one more trick? So, are Christians born again? Let's find out. There's two states of being alive. That's from the scriptures. I'm basic, basing what I say on scripture. There are physical beings and there are spirit beings. Two states. Clear? This is clearly understood when you read scripture. God made it this way. You are physical, or there are spiritual beings. We can st- I'm going to read out of Genesis 1, one particular verse, if you want to read it, read, uh, look there. The first 25 verses of Scripture, Genesis 1, set up the foundation of our physical support, our environment just so you know how God did it. You know, heaven, earth, land, sea, vegetation, animals. It's all set up. Then in verse 26, it's ready. Verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds, cattle, over every creeping thing. So God created man in his image, the image of God he created him, male and female. Nothing in between. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Male and female. This is the reproduction method God has established for his children. We're talking about children today. God's children. His children, that's what we're looking at. How did it get started? Genesis 2, verse 7. Now, this is a key verse. You could 
look at. I'll read it to you. Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That's Adam. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The man Adam became the recipient of a spirit breathed into him by God. This spirit became the spirit of a living man. Every living man passed down from man to man to man. That's how we are human. God gave us that human spirit. So every human on earth springs from that spirit from God passed from Adam. Even Eve received life and that spirit from that man, Adam. You realize it? How do we know? Genesis 2, 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh of its place. Then the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. So God was in introducing the plan for offspring to Adam. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So you see, there was only one person created from dirt and given the spirit of man. It was Adam. It was passed on to every other human being by procreation from that point on. Did you know that? Eve received all the intellectual and physical attributes of Adam, only limited by the diminished physical strengths. Yet Eve is able to produce a child from the seed of her Adam, her husband. This is a prophetic type. Understand? Showing the relationship between Jesus Christ and the church. We need to comprehend the prophetic implications of this. God wants real children, innumerable offspring. We know all this promises to Abraham. He already, God, has innumerable angels of various sorts. He has them. Some have turned to the dark side, by the way. A third of them. And this was all necessary for reasons, various reasons. The dark angels, the disobedient ones, they will be dealt with in their time. But right now, they're working in the disobedient to influence the disobedient. But what about the good angels, the obedient ones? Well, for now, they're serving God and serving us in various ways, as they were meant to. Now, Matthew 1, Matthew chapter 1. 
Let's see how the spirit of man is passed from generation to generation. It's not complicated. Matthew 1, verse 1 through 3, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. It goes on and on. You get the point? The men are begetting the children. This goes all the way to Matthew verse 1, verse 17. So all the generations from Adam, Abraham to David are 14 generations from David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until Christ are 14 generations. It does not read Abraham born Isaac. It reads Abraham begot Isaac. Born and begot are different. I think everybody can agree. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to jo Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. So God begot Christ. Our Father begot our Savior. In the New Testament, what does it mean to be begotten? It means you have received the Holy Spirit in your mind. 1 Peter chapter 1, turn there. This seems, or this happens when you are baptized and hands are laid on you. That's when you receive the Holy Spirit. When you are baptized... And you did get baptized because you repented of your sins. And you came up out of the baptism water, and hands were laid upon you, and the Spirit of God was given to you by a prayer, whoever was officiating at the time. God did it. He begot you. Anyone who is raised up from the baptism water. You still have the spirit of a man that you always had. Now the Holy Spirit is also in you. God gave it. We become begotten again of God. 1 Peter, 2, verse, 1 Peter 1, verse 2. Peter says, To the elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multiplied. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again. Now, that particular Greek word is a genio, not just genio, a genio, begotten again. To a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven, reserved in heaven for you. You who were kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed when? In the last time. We are still flesh, having the Spirit of God in us. That's what the scriptures tell us. 
those who have repented and been baptized, we have received the Spirit of God in us. This is how the Father and the Son dwell with us for the remainder of our fleshly life. Verse 5 again, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Our salvation is to be revealed. The resurrection will reveal our salvation. The only one resurrected from the dead now is Jesus Christ. So, the last time that is referred to has not arrived. In the last time, it says. It's not here yet. Let's look at 1 John 3, verse 9. A difficult scripture for this topic. And I have to, had to deal with it a certain way. <clears throat> it will be confusing if you just read it and ignore the rest of Scripture. You'll think the wrong thing. 1 John 3, verse 9, in the Young's Literal Translation. You, I don't know what Bible you're looking at, but I have three different translations here. I'm going to read them all. Everyone who has been begotten of God, sin he doth not. Because his seed in him doth remain, the Spirit of God. And he is not able to sin, not able to sin, because God, he hath been begotten. You see that begotten is there firmly, twice. The literal version, everyone who has been begotten of God does not sin because his seed abides in him and he is not able to sin because he has been born. <laughs> Same word, but changed it to been born of God. We don't know why translators do these things. Whoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Everyone who has been begotten by God does not practice sin because his seed of begettal is dwelling within him, and he is not able to practice sin because he has been begotten by God. We see one Greek word, same word, translated two ways. We see it. It's there. Check out more Bibles, you'll see it. Born and begotten. The English words have different meanings, clearly. Which is correct? Which one? Begotten in English means that the child is developing within the mother due to the impregnation of the father. Clear? That's begotten. At the completion of that gestation, they, they call it, the child is born. Begotten, born. Two things. They are different. You can be begotten and never born. You can't be born without ever having been begotten. You see, it's very clear. Everybody understands this. But the translators don't. This is the process of creating children that God has established. Begettle 
and birth. Part A, part B. B follows A. If A, then B. Probably. So, it's two steps. Ephesians 4 now. Physically, we are begotten and born. Physically, we are begotten and born. Ephesians 4. Physically, we have been begotten and born. Thanks, Mom. Okay, what about the spiritual version of begotten and born? If we repented, were baptized, had hands laid on us, received the Holy Spirit, we are begotten of God, can that person go on sinning? Well, no. If he does, what happens? Ephesians 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you have the Holy Spirit and you sin, you grieve the Holy Spirit. You know you sinned. You grieve with the Spirit. You repent. You go to God immediately as possible and repent and apologize and say, I'm sorry, please apply the salvation and the redemption of Jesus Christ to me again. We, we become troubled in spirit. Correct? The solution is to repent, heartfelt prayer as soon as possible, and God is ready to forgive us. He's not going to give up because we stumble. That is the basis for John 3, verse 9, which goes on saying, you are not able to sin. That's what it means. I'll read it again. Everyone who has been begotten by God does not practice sin. It's an, another translation which I like a lot because the, this guy puts things clearly. Does not practice sin because his seed of begettal is dwelling within him and he is not able to produce practice sin because he has been begotten by God. So sin from weakness happens. Sin from stupidity happens. Those not begotten of God, not begotten of God, think little of it. And they just watch TV. And there's the difference, you see. God's people are distressed when they sin. Can't believe they did that and said that. I've heard many people in the church talking about things. I can't believe I did that, they say. In any case, if your translation implies that you are born again, you can ascertain the translator's lack understanding they're just translators John 3 John chapter 3 let's look at other verses now is it a baptismal conversion experience John 3 verse 1 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Isn't that amazing? They knew who he was. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Cannot see the kingdom of God. Let me ask the crowd here, the vast crowd. So when you come up out of the baptismal water, you remember that? Can anyone report seeing the kingdom of God? No? For myself, I'm 100% sure that what I see now is the same as before I was baptized. Nothing changed in vision. Verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So, two phrases are clear. One, born of water to flesh. Born of spirit to see the kingdom. We don't see the kingdom yet. So we're still flesh. Yes? So we're not born again. We can't be born again, or we would be seeing the kingdom of God. But we have the promise, don't we? When do we become spirit? We must become spirit to see the kingdom of God. At the resurrection? Yes. Has the resurrection happened? No. More explanation is in verse 7. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes and where it goes. So is, in other words, like that, is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So, we have to ask, from that truth of God, out of the very mouth of Christ, do we travel as the wind and suddenly show up? Or do we still need the sedan? I need the sedan myself. So first, Jesus was begotten and born. Luke 1.30, then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. So Jesus was conceived and born, conceived and born in the flesh. Matthew 1.25, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So, Revelation 1. If we would turn to Revelation 1, we'll read a little bit, because we're going to be talking about something else. So we're born of the flesh first. Even Jesus was born of the flesh First, and he was not spirit. Well, he was flesh. Revelation 1, verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. Was Jesus resurrected? Philippians 3. 
He was born again of spirit. Philippians 3, verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait. Big word. We wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. We need to be transformed, obviously, to become spirit, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So we found that key word, Wait. The word is wait. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians explains the resurrection. That big resurrection chapter, chapter 15. First Corinthians 15. I'm just reading three verses. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. See, we have a resurrection word there. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. This is when we are born again. This is what we are waiting for. The appearing of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Until then, we are not born again. So there it is. Our change comes at the sounding of the last trumpet. Until then, we are begotten of God. You have received this information based upon the Word of God. Every additional topic concerning the truth, which originates in Scripture, builds understanding leading to salvation. We hope you will personally review the Scriptures cited in this presentation. God will teach you if you ask Him. Until next time, good day.